How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another Plastic... No, this isn't an episode of Plastic Fanatics, even though you can find it on Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This... Shameless plug. Love it. Um, this is a review, showcase, look-see, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, might slowly get back into doing some reviews and such. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it's been a long time, and so hopefully... I don't stumble too much here, um, but today taking a look at the Square Enix Play Arts Kai Marvel Universe variant Black Panther figure. Now this was designed by Hitoshi Kondo who designed all of the Marvel Universe variant figures. I really like what he's done with these um, classic characters, giving them an, an anime flair and um, and adding in a whole bunch of like armor and and really cool stuff on the actual figure but before we take a look or a more in-depth look at the of the black panther let's take a look at the box since i love my boxes now this is the new style of artwork that they're using for the marvel variant line we saw it first off in the deadpool release and carried over so forth with wolverine doctor strange and all that but um nice action sequence of the actual figure of the toy down here you get some nice foil writing Again, designed by Hitoshi Kondo. I do like the fact that they're putting on a hologram sticker for authenticity, but I'm sure that'll probably get knocked off. Also, for authenticity, look for the Square Enix logo up here. Um, sometimes it gets lost in the mix and, some, and you just kind of forget. But look for that. And then, obviously, look for the machine stamp at the bottom for a um, real opposed to knockoff. Now, just like every other Play Arts Kai release, as of late, you get the nice little open window box here. So you get the figure on one side, you get a nice little write-up on the other side, mm -hmm. which this one has, um, what is this one talking about? This is talking about the whole Marvel Universe, and then you get a nice little kind of bio of Black Panther T'Challa there, I'm sure. But I can't read it too well, but on the back here... You get a nice little comic books kind of artwork piece, which I do like. So that's nice that they added that in now. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Bring the Panther back in. All right. So he stands about a little over 10 inches tall, so he's a bigger figure. Um, really nice looking. I do love the design, like I said before. Um, the molded in armor bits along with like the vibranium daggers on the side, the necklace. Um, everything just looks really great for this figure. I mean, it works. Um, I do like the coloring. It's not just all black. Maybe, hopefully, the camera will pick up on it. But you get some shades of of purple, blues. Kind of like what we saw with the Venom release. And I do like the sculpted texturing on the costume or on the on his armor and such. But let's see. Yeah, you can kind of see like the carbon fiber or whatever you want to call it but it looks good and then you, it breaks up nicely and the armor bits having the nice little shine and then just the costume having a matte finish not too bad all right um one gripe really quickly i do like the sculpt but i do think that the head is just a tad bit small um if you're looking at him straight on, maybe it doesn't show up on camera, but it, it just looks small. Um, and if you think of anatomy, you think there's a head actually inside of that helmet. That head's got to be really small compared to all this. Um, and you don't want this to be too bulky. I mean, the Black Panther is all about stealth and agility and all that. So, But when you have him posed, you don't really see that. Um, but what I do really like about it is the head sculpt. And they put a little bit of blue to kind of highlight the eyes, but straight on, you have the wide-eyed look. But I do like the kind of the illusion that you can get when you turn his head side to side, so you get that kind of squint kind of look. I really do um, like when you can have that option, or that's designed into the figure. All right. He does come with several pairs of hands out of the box comes with these I believe they're they're these but they're open clawed and you got some really nice detail 
on them. And let's take a look at his other, which will just pan down here. Now he comes with two gripping hands. My camera will focus. Again, they have some really nice detail on them. Um, you cannot open these. These are actually molded closed. And um, they are for his vibranium knives, which I'll showcase here in a second. You do have these um, kind of fighting stance hands. I don't know whatever you want to call them. And then you have a little bit more of an open gripping hand that you can also use with the knives. And again, really well detailed. All right, so he comes with two of these and you got some nice paint on the actual scabbers or sheaves there. Pull that out. You can actually see the blade now. And then you can just remove the handle and then you can fit it into his hand there. Or if you don't want to use that, you, they fit fairly well in the open hand, but they are just a little loose and they're actually kind of pointed downward or at an angle, I mean. So, but you have that option. Now you can house these on the figure they do have a mushroom peg here, but as you can see, that mushroom peg is extremely small in my opinion. Um, they peg in the back and if you're going to do it, I recommend heating up the plastic here so you can get these pegs in or plug them in. But as you can see, it's a kind of a tight fit. And on top of that, when you do get it on here, rotating around, be careful because you don't want, you want the whole piece to move, not just the actual scabbard and, you know, you end up snapping this, the peg off. But you can see that it hinders articulation. So I don't know if you'd, I mean, you can have it down, but again, then you're gonna run the risk of it kind of getting in there. Um, cool idea, but you know, for a figure that's, if you paid, you know, the normal retail of $150 off the Square Enix store, you don't want to break these and such. But you do have that option to house them there. Now, as far as articulation is concerned, he's got all the same articulation, so I'm not going to go over it in depth. Um, if you're familiar with Play Arts Kai figures, then you know what you have for articulation. I mean, you got the standard ball hinge um, for the elbow, wrist, and ankle so you can manipulate it around so you can get the ankle rocker um, and it swivels at the top and at the base and all that type of stuff. You do have a um, bicep swivel. The arm has a decent range of motion. Um, you can pull it down, up, and such, but you can't really, it doesn't have a butterfly joint because it's a newer style that goes, plugs into the chest. And this is more of a harder plastic so you can't really get it around um, same double ball peg for the for the head connecting to the neck and then the neck connected to the chest the same thing is um, so you got that um, as far as the chest kind of got some clicks there couple one two um, not too much of a well I don't know. I don't think that's too big of a gap, especially because it's all kind of uniform in color. It kind of hides it um, on the back. It's not too bad either. Now he is hollow, so certain poses you can see right through him, unfortunately. This could have been a little bit maybe smaller, but it, it works. As far as the waist, you got the same kind of ball peg. T-joint goes into the actual hips. You got the ratchets. You do have the floating crotch so you can kind of position it so you can get a little bit more um, range of motion, but no real super kick, which kind of a fail. You do have a thigh cut, which unfortunately it breaks the sculpt. It's not very well hidden like the Magneto. Double jointed L um, knees, and they're not bad. Um, this hides it fairly well. 
And that's about it. So, you get a lot of range of motion with them. And lastly, some comparisons. If you've been collecting the variant line, here he is next to Captain America, which he's a tad bit taller, but just a little. And then I have his knees bent a little bit, but and he's he's already short, anyways. But um, you got Wolverine. They look good. They look good together. All right, so that's about it. Um, I I would assume the biggest gripe, and at least my biggest gripe with this figure, is the fact that the price point. If you're just looking at the standard, you know, retail price, it's 150. Is it worth 150? Hell no. Um, it doesn't come with a lot of accessory pieces. It would have been nice to have come with maybe a type of vibranium, you know, effect piece. So he's kind of like throwing uh, a knife or a dagger or something. A staff, maybe an extra head. Um, kind of um, disappointing on that end. He does come with a player's Kai stand, which is standard. But if you got the Magneto or if you got the Doctor Strange, they're the same price and you get way more accessories with those releases which is kind of a shame with this guy he looks phenomenal though um i do like the look everything about him so um if you can find him for cheap i would definitely pick him up but normal retail price i would probably just pass for now and maybe get him on a nice like amazon prime day or some type of sale so that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. I do appreciate it. Um, check out Plast Fanatics, Saturday 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, hopefully I'll do this again. And if you like it, the video, please like, subscribe, you know, all that type of stuff. So, all right. Have a good one.